This apple cobbler with cake mix and pie filling recipe is the best. It's a dump cake style cobbler, so it's really easy because there's no rolling out pie crust or mixing batter. All you have to do is literally just pour or dump everything into a casserole dish and then bake. Technically, this recipe only has three ingredients, but adding a couple other things will help to give it that homemade taste. For a 9 by 13 casserole dish, you will need one 15.25 ounce box of cake mix. I am using white. I recommend using either white or yellow. I think those flavors are fairly neutral, but feel free to let your imagination run wild. You could use a spice cake mix. I think that would be good. French vanilla. If you're feeling adventurous, maybe even chocolate. So if you use a unique type of cake mix, please let me know below in the comment section. I would love to hear about it. I am going to use two 20 ounce cans of apple pie filling. If you're using metric, that's 567 grams in each can. In the United States, pie filling is usually sold in 20 ounce cans but be sure to read the label. We're also going to add some butter, a lot of butter, somewhere between one and two sticks of butter. If you want to be kind of conservative, you're thinking Chef Parnell, that's a lot of butter, go with one stick. I think one and a half would be okay, but if you're feeling really indulgent, go with the two sticks of butter. But like I said, minimum one stick. To make this taste a little more homemade, I am going to add some more spices. I'm going to add some cinnamon, ginger, and nutmeg, along with lemon juice. I may or may not add lemon zest. We'll see. If you're unfamiliar with lemon zest, it's literally just the skin of the lemon. I rubbed it along a cheese grater to get the yellow part of the rind. It adds a ton of flavor. I don't want this to be too lemony, so I may or may not use it, but if you want to, I think it would be good. Like I said, this apple cobbler recipe is super simple. All we have to do is dump everything into the casserole dish. I use some of the butter to grease it, so the first step is literally just pouring the apple filling into the casserole dish and then smoothing it out. I'm almost done spreading out the pie filling into the casserole dish. Just make sure the apples and gel are evenly distributed just like that. If you see any really big apples like this one maybe you might want to cut it in half just so that it's a bit easier to eat. There, that looks good. Put that off to the side for now. I tasted this pie filling and honestly, I'm really impressed. It actually does taste good as is, but the chef in me wants to add something else to it and doctor it up. So I am going to add some spices. The ingredients list says that the apple pie filling already has some cinnamon. I think it has some, maybe not a ton. I'm going to start off with half a teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of ginger, and an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. Like I said, this is a dump cake style apple cobbler. So I am literally just going to sprinkle everything on top. I may add more spice later. We'll see. If you've never made this before, like I said, the pie filling that I bought is good, so it doesn't absolutely need anything. But if you do want to add something to it, add a little bit and then taste it because you can always add more later, but it's really hard to take away. There. Now I'm going to add 
some lemon juice. I have two tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice. I am going to use a half teaspoon measurement to drizzle it over. I highly recommend you use a small spoon to drizzle over the lemon juice because if you just go like that, I can guarantee you that almost all the lemon juice is going to end up in one part of the cobbler. Not everyone likes lemon juice in their cobbler, so if you want to leave it out, that's totally fine. I really like it. I think lemon and anything fruit-based, especially berries, really brightens everything up. But if you do not have any, that is not a problem. So now I'm going to taste this. Over here, let's mix it in a little bit. Hmm. I think it tastes good. As you can see, I mixed in the spices. All I did is I took my fork. You could take a spoon as well and just literally rub it over the top like that. I am actually going to add a little bit of brown sugar. Do not feel obligated to do this, but I think it's going to be good. I am adding a quarter of a cup of brown sugar. I recommend light brown sugar, but I have dark, so that's what I'm going to use. A quarter cup, as I measure in grams, is 60 grams. So I'm just going to add a little bit on top. I'm just going to add a little bit because the cake mix has sugar in it, so I do not want this to be too sweet. There we go. Just over like this. Once it's all on, I will blend it in as well, and then it will be time to move on to the cake mix. I'm almost done spreading out the brown sugar and the spices. Like I said, just take a spoon or a fork and spread everything out like this. Now it's time for the cake mix. Well, I'm gonna take my box of cake mix, 15.25 ounces, and all I'm literally going to do is sprinkle it over the top. Like this. Hence the name Dump Cake. And then, once it is all sprinkled on top of the apple pie filling, I am going to smooth it out. Make sure everything is even and that as little of the apple filling is poking through the top as possible. The corners are probably easier to do um, by spreading into the corners and pouring into the corners. So just keep that in mind. So if you try to pour into a corner, you might accidentally pour onto the counter and make a mess. So it does not have to be perfect. But like I said, just try to even it out. Like I said, the cake mix does not have to be perfect on top of the cobbler, but you do want to try to get it as smooth as possible. You may have seen me go like this a couple times. I was just trying to spread it out. I was not trying to pack down the cake mix. You do not need to do that. Just spread it out. You pack it down here and there, or make that kind of motion just to spread out the cake mix. That's fine, but like I said, do not feel the need to actually press down. Now that that's done, it's time to cut the butter. So here I'm gonna start off with one stick. Let's see how much I need. And I'm cutting them into, I'm cutting the stick into fairly small pieces. My butter, each tablespoon, it has marks to cut it into three pieces. So that's pretty much what I'm doing. I'm getting about three pieces per tablespoon of butter. 
So they're very small pieces like this. This is a lot easier if your butter is cold. So keep it in the refrigerator until you are ready for this point. Now that my butter is cut into small squares, I am going to simply just lay the butter on top of the cobbler. I cut it into small pieces because I want it to melt as evenly as possible. If you leave it in large chunks, it will melt of course, but it's going to melt more down than out. So you're going to get big globs of butter here and there, but you're going to have some of your toppings, some of the cake mix that doesn't have hardly any butter at all. So cut your butter into small pieces. One thing I did want to mention is that with these dump cake style cobblers, I have seen people melt the butter and then pour it on top. I think you could definitely do that, but most people on the internet seem to cut the butter into pieces and then lay the pieces directly on top of the cobbler. So I am definitely going to need another stick and some of these pieces I might have to spread them out a bit, but it's going to be good. Just to clarify, the reason why I don't think melting the butter and pouring it over the top of the cobbler is a good idea is that I think it would be even more difficult to evenly distribute the butter. Unless you used a small spoon to slowly drizzle the butter over the top of the cake mix, I think that what would likely happen is that you would get large patches with a lot of butter and then large patches with no butter at all. So even though it's a bit tedious, I think just cutting the butter into small pieces and laying the butter on top of the cobbler like I did here is the best way to go about it. I just finished putting the butter on top of the cake mix. I used two full sticks of butter slicing the butter very thinly. Honestly, I have seen recipes on the internet in which people only use one stick of butter, but I think you definitely need to use one and a half, if not two sticks, because if you only use one stick of butter, you are definitely going to have areas of the cake mix crust that are gonna turn out dry. Once my oven is done preheating to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm going to bake this cake mix cobbler. I just pulled the apple cobbler out of the oven. It was in at 350 uncovered for an hour and a half. One thing that I did is that this side was originally over here. I felt like it wasn't getting brown enough, so I flipped it for the last 15 minutes. This is my first time ever making a dump cake cobbler with cake mix, so I was really curious as to how it would turn out. I think I let it cool for about an hour and a half, so it was still a bit warm, not completely cooled like I usually do. I know that if someone is looking for an easy cake mix cobbler recipe, he or she is probably going to attack it almost immediately as it comes out of the oven, so I wanted to see what it would taste like warm. Honestly, this apple cobbler with cake mix and pie filling was actually a lot better than I was expecting. If you watch my channel, you know that I like to make a lot of things from scratch, pie crust, cobbler and pie filling, things like that. So I was not expecting this to be as good as it was. This easy apple cobbler with cake mix and pie filling was delicious. Although it was definitely good, it was different from the cobblers and pies that I normally make. So it was good in a different way. For example, since I used store-bought canned apple pie filling and not fresh apples like I normally do, although the filling definitely did taste like apples, the fruit flavor was not as strong as in my other recipes. That's why I'm really glad that I added the extra spices and especially the brown sugar. Although you could definitely just make the three ingredient apple cobbler version with 
just the apple pie filling, the cake mix, and the butter. If you are an experienced cook, and especially if you make a lot of homemade things, I highly recommend adding the extra spices and the extra brown sugar, either light or dark, because it's going to help give it more flavor and give it that homemade taste that you're used to. If you've made my other cobbler recipes, I wanted to point out that this one was definitely very buttery and the crust was very sweet. Two sticks of butter is definitely a lot for a 9 by 13 dish, but honestly, I think you really need it because, like I said earlier in the video, you need to get that cake mix buttery so that it crisps up in the oven. And I think that the texture contrast between the pie filling and the cake mix topping helps to make this really good. The second thing that I wanted to point out was that this cobbler was definitely sweet. The apple pie filling had sugar, I added some extra sugar, and the cake mix itself had sugar. Some people might find this to be too sweet, but I think that the spices and the butter help to tone down the sweetness. Overall, this easy apple cobbler with cake mix and pie filling recipe was delicious. If you've never made a dump cake apple cobbler recipe before, I definitely suggest this one. This would be the perfect last minute Thanksgiving dessert or Christmas or just because dessert. And since it is so rich, a little would go a long way so it would be perfect for a crowd. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.